Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show. It's been a while, so uh, my producer Dave Cable and I talked about this, and we're going to have seasons. So, again, this is the, our, our fall season leading into the winter season. That summer season was amazing, eight weeks of amazing guests. I interviewed probably 16 people in, eight, in, in a matter of four hours. This week, uh, this season, eight amazing guests, four in studio, and then four on the phone on the Neil Haley Show. I would have been in the studio earlier, but I had a freak accident, broken toe, lacerated toe. But if you follow me at Total Tutor or TotalTutor.net, you would know what's going on with me because we're doing live shows every day, major celebrities. I'm interviewing someone from Heroes Reborn today, live at 3 p.m. Eastern. Interviewed somebody from the new Peanuts movie. So you gotta go to my website, TotalTutor.net, or follow me at Twitter, at Total Tutor or Neil S. Haley. And I thought let's put some locality and put some local flavor into this. Uh, when you have a studio, like we have Marianne Anderson from Northern Connection Magazine, we've had Darnell Dinkins, Super Bowl champion, so we brought some people in the studio before when it was an education show. But I'm excited to welcome a former colleague of mine in this school, one of my favorite schools I ever taught in St. Agnes, especially when Patsy Caulfield was principal. So, Coach Karen Hall, Coach Karen Hall, how are you? I'm good, Neil. Uh, it's, nice to see it's you. It's great to have her. Uh, we had her interviewed her I, probably four years ago about her career, but not an in-depth interview like we're going to do today because, again, former UNLV college basketball star involved in the Ozanam basketball, head coach, coaching now yes. as well. She's coached for Duquesne. She's done so many different things. But the story has to take place, and when I interview celebrities, and she says, well, celebrity, well, mm. a celebrity locally, especially mm -hmm. WPL Hall of Fame, yes. your team. Right. So there's a lot of accolades for Coach Karen Hall. But if you Googled her, as I, as I have this up here, I have hardly any bio, and I have to tell her, hey, she's got to get that social media blueprint, that Google blueprint. But we're going to find out the story about her. So starting out, did you always want to play basketball growing up? Well, you know, uh, I actually went to St. Agnes where I ended yeah. up teaching. So uh -huh. that was a wonderful coming yeah. back home. And, you know, we had basketball at school. And actually, St. Agnes is where everything began. So I was on the team, and actually my coach thought I was pretty good. Right. She actually sent me to my first camp at Carlo, which is now Carlo University. And I figured out I could do this. And I just continued to hone my craft yes. of playing basketball, maintain my studies. That was huge in our household. And then I started playing against other kids around Pittsburgh. And then I found about Ozanam. And Ozanam just opened my world. Oh, wow. Uh, tremendous exposure okay. from the type of people that just are in Pittsburgh. So right. you're traveling domestically and then right. internationally. So my basketball career, I could say, really took off when I became involved with Ozanam. Ozanam. And, and I played Ozanam as well yeah. when I played for Central Catholic. I, I played in Ozanam, and then I think I played another league with my good friend Charles Burks. Mm -hmm. So Ozanam was awesome because, again, that is, again, the Hill District. That Explain is the that Hill District. for our international, national audience to know about this, sure. basically, that this is where the playground legends came from, or Ozanam. Right. So Ozanam, which was, as Neil just mentioned, was originated in the Hill District under the direction of Mr. Carl Coleman. Uh, in conjunction with the Diocese of Pittsburgh. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Absolutely. Okay. So we were located on Ozanil, which was the bottom court in Granville. So right off Center Avenue. Uh, locally, you would know the console. Right. Uh, you know, internationally, domestically, like our downtown area. Right. Uh, so basically, Ozanil became a bridge to bridge kids from all over Western Pennsylvania, Springdale, Indiana, PA, right. the Hill District. We all were connected right. exactly. by our commonality of basketball. Okay. And so you talk about diversity, which is huge today. Yeah. All of our diversities began so early when we were like 12, 13, 14 years old. Right. So today we're indoctrinated to be around different types of people from all different R cultures. Exactly. So not only was it the sport, but it was an education just meeting different people in our own city, in our own backyard that we didn't even know. Hill District, suburbia, exactly. rural. Exactly. And that way, it start, It begins to shape you as a person. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, and Mr. Coleman was big on exposure. So we would travel to Boston. Mm -hmm. We would go sightsee. Wow. We, were, we took a boat ride mm -hmm. on the Boston Harbor. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, it oh, really? was huge. Oh. And we would get information about it. The old Boston Garden, the legendary really? Boston Garden, where Larry Bird you know, yes. shot all the exactly. shots. We were in there touring the Boston Garden. 
So we went to Stockholm, Sweden. Oh my God! So we had translators coming. And this all has to do with those now. This all had to do with those. It was, so you had to be pretty much on the All Star team of those You now. you have to be one of the elite, the, the, the elite, elite type players. players. They're not going. No. Not everyone playing no. in those right. I didn't go to any of these places when right. I played in those I mean, Central Catholic had an those team, and then, like I said, right. my friend Charles Burks had right. an those team, and that's the thing that's amazing about those is that ultimately it wasn't just so structured that you would have teams that were from high school exactly. or teams from middle schools. Right. You would have teams from the neighborhood Absolutely. that were playground players. All playground and they, had, and, they, and they could play for certain time yes. after. So high school kids were playing with some pretty top talent. Oh yeah, players. that was that was the ideal of bringing kids in from all over. Right. Because you're suburbanite, rural or urban and you think you're good. Exactly. Well, when you come to Ozenam, it's a huge barometer of where you are and where everyone else is. So you get to measure your craft, you get to measure your skill, your strength and where you're weak at. Because players there that time players are playing all day long yes and all year long yes so every day people were getting better so if you came there thinking you were hot stuff someone probably right. cooled you off with a jumper here a dunk there a dunk there yeah you know and, and then the crowds were pretty big uh, as the well crowds were huge that that was a part of the the culture of ozenam uh the bringing people together you know whereas maybe we wouldn't tend to come up into the hill district but you came there, you parked your car, guess what? It was there when you left. Exactly. <laughs> you know, um, you know, officiating, you know, we had black officials, we had white officials, we had right. um, Hispanic officials. It was diversity. So the time you're playing girls basketball, Ozenam started for you at what age? You're so I was 13 years 13. old. 13. So this is after St. Agnes, so you went on to yeah, Mount Alberta. I went to Mount Alberta yeah. High School. Um, yeah. Actually, I was scheduled to go, it was then Oakland Catholic, okay. or oh, excuse me, uh, St. Paul St. Cathedral. Yeah. Now, Oakland Catholic, people say I was recruited. Yeah. I just say, I, you know, I took the test from Mount. So was I Mount Alvernia, the team, was that an Ozenam team, Mount Alvernia, or I, did you I play? Actually, did no. Not? No, I ended up playing on different teams. Our high school team never really entered into Ozenam. That happened later, that high uh, school started to, to get more into the So 9th through 12th grade, I, I played Ozenam all the way through, but I encouraged some of my Mount Alvernia teammates to come play Ozenam right. outside of our high school team. So that you can get better. You got better in Ozenam. You know, so you brought your high school right. t uh, skills to Ozenam individually. Exactly. Because we didn't play as a team, a summer league team. That means that we, our coaches pretty much took a break in this, our high school coaches. Exactly. Took a break during the summer. So we went off and did what we did, camps, summer leagues, shootouts, uh -huh. just work out. Uh, but that was the place. And if you wanted to get better, you played Ozenam. And then if you were skilled enough, you were ventured off into those AAU teams, the teams that were, were traveling domestically and internationally. For some of us, Ozenil provided our first flight. Now, even, oh though, even though, I mean, you say it's just a sport. Well, no, yeah. it was a huge so, culture so what was so, so you're basically the best players in Ozenil, girl girls basketball right. in high school would have a travel team. Absolutely. So th that's not always out there that they did have that. So that was after the league was over. So like the league started like probably in June and ended at a certain time. Then you did the travel stuff or you did the travel stuff. Oh no, we the did the travel stuff right in the midst of the summer league. Oh really? Yeah. So okay. it was AAU. So, so you played Athletic during the weekdays for the games. Yeah. And then, and then, and then uh, like maybe Friday through the weekend, we were traveling to Boston, Louisiana. Ozenam, because we were Ozenam AAU team, that's right. when all the best players could be on one exactly. team. We were two-time defending national AAU champions. Oh, wow. Uh, so this 16, is the AAU 18, when it really started, and it was not at this point where it's the, you, the best played AAU, right. not the ones that had the money. Exactly. And that's the problem that's happening yes. in travel teams totally now. Agree. Anyone could go and be in an all-star yes. team now. Yeah. That's, that's garbage. The best players yeah. should be playing. And then the other thing is, where are they not going on the playgrounds anymore? Right. Because again, when I was told, okay, suburban kid, I'm going to go play basketball. You can't go keep playing get with kids from Edgewood. You can't come keep going playing with kids of Forest Hills. You had to come to the Hill. You had to come to uh, Reisenstein to learn how yeah. to play yeah. basketball. You yeah. could not play, and you got to play the kids older than you that could play above the rim, so you would build and, and develop those skills. I, and that's why, I guarantee, that's why we have more players in Europe, because they're playing year-round, and these kids are all 
oh, we're going in this league. I got a, right. I got a kid, I tutor that plays at Gateway, right. but they're not playing on the playgrounds anymore. Yeah. They're playing in yeah. gyms. It's right. a sad thing, but we could talk about the state of Ozempic. But we're about Coach Karen Hall on this interview. But again, the series of interviews this season, you will see Darrell Porter, University of Pittsburgh. You can talk about his days, and he's also involved. And then Bill Neal, Connie Hawkins. And so, I, and, and so I'm excited about, and, and again, I know Bill Neal, and I wonder if he'll remember me from when I was sitting down at the draft with Coach Corlew. We'll have to bring that up. He doesn't and then, forget too many people. And so, so, he Bill, doesn't Bill, Bill, I know, people. I'm sure, because Bill, and, 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 and for sure. But let's kind of jump into, you're getting this experience. Mm -hmm. Did you think you were going to play college basketball? When you were that, so you were probably one of the best players in, in, in girls basketball at Mount Overy, I meaning like you were what's it called, Post-Gazette type? Or right, exactly, Post-Gazette, uh, and then Street and Smith, right. and then I was on the national level with the exactly. uh, a, uh, like AU All-American right, status. Right, right, right. So I had developed a reputation for myself around the country. Okay. And AU at that time, this, you were playing against the best players, which brought all the exactly. best coaches out to watch you. So, so I the coaches began, were, that's how they were recruiting. recruiting. Absolutely. I was, because, yeah. As a freshman at Mount Alvernia, I began to get letters. Oh my gosh! So okay. letters are good because that's the yeah. norm. But you know, you're really pretty. You're pretty good when they start the calls. Yeah. And then they start by your junior year, senior year. They want to come visit you in your home. So I had coaches coming to Pittsburgh to visit exactly. me in my home. They would go to my high school, the academic end of it. Right. Then they come see me play against really good teams. Then. Right. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I thought it was pretty good because my measure, my barometer on the AU level, I could compete. And uh, I actually ended up being teammates with a couple girls from Tennessee and from California that played AU on their circuit. Right, and we'll talk about also how you uh, balanced the books while mm -hmm. doing all this because St. Agnes and Mount Alvernia are not easy schools no. to get good grades. Right. And, and again, Coach Hall went on to to be a, a, a phys ed teacher as well during a, a, a stint in her career. Right. It's interesting. I never would have thought the St. Agnes uh, group, we have, a, again, Coach Karen Hall, myself, nationally syndicated right. radio host and, and TV, former professional wrestler right. at St. Agnes. And then you have people like Brandon Knight yep. send his kid to St. Agnes and Carl Krauser right. send his kid to St. Yeah. Agnes. So you had some pretty, and then you have Kevin McClatchy walking right. in yeah. and Kevin Johnson yes. walking in. That was this amazing yeah. thing with Extra Mile Foundation. So that's another reason why Coach Karen Hall said, I'm going back to my alma mater, yeah. which is St. Agnes, to teach. And we can talk about that. I, I don't think we're going to get to everything as she sees that I continue to mm -hmm. really tell a story. Right. She needs to write a book. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of things she keeps private, but she can't anymore. So when we get back, <laughs> more than the Neil Haley Show with Coach Karen Hall. We're going to talk about UNLV and life after UNLV, some of the teaching, and then also the honors of the WPIL, and I'm sure we'll have to do more. You're watching the Neil Haley Show, and also syndicate on the national level on radio and on the Total Education Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. Back to the Neil Haley Show, and we are highlighting Coach Karen Hall, who will be my co-host for three interviews this month, and then the next season, the winter season, as I'll call this the fall season, even though fall is definitely upon us 
as it's November, yes. and I talked about that serious injury. But you got to go to Tolter.net for more information. Twitter, Tolter. Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Tolter. Pinterest, Neil Haley, Google Plus, and also on Periscope at Total Tutor. I got a Periscope again, interviewing the Princess of Serbia. That's the last time I did a, a Periscope, but I'll have to Periscope again. But so we're going back with Coach Karen Hall. Now you're recruited. Yes. Why did you choose L U N L V? I mean, is it because because of Coach Jerry Tarkanian had to come <laughs> and the Shark had to kind of put his little point in saying, okay, I'm going and looking at kids. Aren't there were there kids from? Did anyone play U N L E from Pittsburgh? Well, the, the, the Tarkanian recruit. So Larry Anderson, he actually played. He was a Shinley grad. Okay. Uh, was recruited nationwide and ended up at U N L V, and he played prior to my arrival. So okay. he was probably four or five years prior to okay. my arrival there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knew of him. I actually met his brothers that were now living mm -hmm. in uh, Vegas. And then, of course, Armin Gilliam, who we lost yes. a few years ago, right from Bethel I didn't Park. Know, I didn't know he passed, passed yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Oh He's gosh. probably gone like three or four years now. But Armin was after you. Armin was before me. Oh, before you. Yes. So, that, so there goes another Pittsburgh type of source oh, yeah. that, that for the running reps. Well, the UNLV had a Pittsburgh connection. Like, actually, for the Lady Rebels, we had a young lady by the name of Lori Arndt who played at Mount Alvernia, about six foot three. Okay. She ended up out at UNLV playing. And then that was, it was so Larry Anderson, Lori Arndt, and then Armin Gilliam. Armin, who wrestled at Bethel Park, his basketball career started so much later, but he evolved into an NBA player. Yeah. He ended up going to a junior college in Texas. Right. And coach Tim Gergrich, another local. Oh yeah, Gergrich, yes. And Clea Edwards, another local. Did Pittsburgh. you know Gergrich? I knew them all, yes. Yeah. Still in touch with them. They recruited Armin. They went to go see another kid and found Armin. Oh my. So Armin was two years prior to my arrival and we become great friends at UNLV. I didn't know Armin here in Pittsburgh. So did Tarkanian come out and did you know meet, meet the shark when you were so, uh, before so, getting signing your letter with UNLV? Yeah. So I um, remember I'm a lady reb. Yes. So coach Coach Tark's a rebel. So yeah. that, that was he was a men's head coach. So actually Jim Bola, who was from Pittsburgh, who played at Pitt, was the co head coach at UNLV. So there's so many Pittsburgh ties to the, out uh, of the UNLV Rebels, prior right? to my arrival okay. that they kept coming back home. To recruit, okay. hotbed. So, but you, what other schools? I mean, so you'd say I had you, I had University of Southern California, right? University of Nevada, Las Vegas, yeah. Connecticut, which wasn't Connecticut no. back then, no, and University of Missouri. You would have gone to Connecticut. Well, I don't know. Right? I was, I had AUs had allowed me to travel all over. Yeah. That I never mentioned West. So uh. I was Magic Johnson was doing his thing out yeah. in LA, and I'm thought. I love that guy. I love how he plays exa his exa exa Exactly. I got to get the SC. I got to yes. get the Southern Cal. Right. So when Southern Cal recruited me, I'm like, that's where I'm going. I was. Gonna, so I visited all my other schools because you can get five visits. And some, somehow UNLV is the, the... So here's the bottom line. Here's the story. I'm five foot four point guard. It was a six foot four post from Palos Alto, Al Alto uh, California, mm -hmm. right near Stanford. Well, USC recruited the post. I can't grow anymore. Yeah. Like that's it. I'm a point guard. So they took the six foot four post. So my choices came down to USC, Southern California, yeah. and University of Nevada, Las Vegas. They both were right. out west. I was going west. So USC signed the six foot four post. Yeah. So UNLV signed the five foot four point guard. Happily ever after, it worked out great. So the women's team at UNLV, we all know about the right. men's team. Were they pretty good? Oh, we were running. For my four years, we did three NCAAs. Second round was like the furthest right. we advanced, and we, then we did it. Because there's only, there was only like eight powerhouses in women's college basketball. Well, at, at that, that time, time, Tennessee was the dominant. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, Tennessee was the dominant. They had Old Dominion still right. dominating right. then. Right. So you really had two powers. Right. Like, everybody else was behind. And USC with Cheryl Miller yes. had just won oh, back wow. to back. Oh, yeah. Michelle Miller, the McGee sisters, yes. Pam and Carla. I mean, yeah. they were powers then. But it wasn't like today you have about five powers. But you have teams that could go further. Exactly. Than, than, you have than, teams than, than, that can be extremely competitive now. Uh, so I ended up, we, we were running. So mm -hmm. I got to start to break. The big kid got the yeah. rebound. I was the outlet. Uh -huh. And we were pushing. We were the running Lady Rebs. And so, we so ran you went quite three well. And, three and three three and two, ways, two conference championships. Okay. A host of individual awards for myself. A two-year team captain. My right. senior year, I was a lone captain. Um, so I was extremely happy. 
uh, with my collegiate athletic and career. And then that time the WNBA was really in development. WNBA was nowhere could near. Could you play it? Could they you have played were, it? Everything was overseas. If, you were, if they had WNBA oh, I, I could have played it. I could have played it. I was Mentally, I was at that level. Physically, mm -hmm. I was at that level and could still get mm -hmm. better, you know, for the next mm -hmm. level. Opportunities to go overseas existed. Right. Um, at that point in my brain, I was going to trade my tennis shoes in for my microphone. Television broadcasting was my academic major. Okay. And I had done internships out of okay. UNLV, our CBS affiliate okay. out there. I had written for oh my our gosh. local uh, campus newspaper. I was swamped. Okay. So by my senior year, I was hiding. And so there was not I, was there not as much money in Europe at that time for women's basketball? I, I think it was enough money. I, mentally, I just was ready to go into something. Okay, so like, we're I figuring out life home. after already yeah, for her. Yeah, we're I've, already finding out life yeah, after basketball for right. Coach Karen Hall. She said, no, no, no. My major's journalism. I'm going that way. I'm going to sports well, broadcasting. I'm getting into yeah. this. So right off of that, right out of there. So you, you, instead of saying coaching, no, you want to go yeah, this way. Yeah, coaching wasn't in my brain. So actually, uh, I wrote a Swedish diary when we uh, played mm -hmm. in Sweden. Mm -hmm. The Pittsburgh Courier okay. asked me to keep a diary. So I did. And when I came back, we edited and published it in the paper. There sparked my interest to major in communications. Right. So now I thought, well, I like to talk. Right. How about this? What do we do? Communication, broadcast. Exactly. And that's what I did. So I, I maximized my academic time at UNLV, um, internships, student newspaper, right. sports editor. Right. Um, we did, well, we did a television station out at UNLV, and I, got, I was a part of all that, honing what was to become my future. Exactly. And then I graduated, four years. That was one of the right. best moments of my life. And I actually uh, wanted to broadcast for the Lady Rebels. So it was, I, okay. they hired me in sports information. Okay. So sports information. So you stayed in Vegas for a while. For like part of the summer because sports okay. information, you had to do computers and numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm a talker. I'm a people right. person. I can't, I could talk to exactly. the computer, won't talk right. back. So I, I stayed there for a minute and then I got a job here in Pittsburgh as an associate sports producer at WPXI. Okay. And they launched So did you work with Fedco? Yeah, John Fetko? yeah, I work with yeah, Fetko. John. He was on his. Uh, he had just came in when I then fell into coaching. So understand, I played my entire life. I didn't think about coaching as my so, career. So you were doing sports information with sports information in Vegas. I get a job here in Pittsburgh. It's PXI. PXI. So I fly back to Pittsburgh. Mm. I'm home now, working at PXI. Mm -hmm. Well, it's summertime. Where's my basketball? Where's my yeah. summer league? You know, I'm having this yeah. withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. So a job opened up at Duquesne. Okay, that's where I saw. That's the, where it all starts. So, so I, if you Google her, yeah. things come up from a long, yeah, long yeah. time ago. And yeah. I'm like, oh, did she get hired by Duquesne? And I oh, didn't know yeah. about that after leaving St. Agnes. No. I guess it was a story about Saint, being a St. Agnes first. Okay, so yeah, you so get hired I as had assistant to decide, at Duquesne? TV or basketball, and I love both. But I but guess so, I love basketball a little bit more. Because yeah. I fell into coaching. And it just fit. So you were assistant coach at Duquesne? I was an assistant coach at Duquesne three years. What years were those? Uh, 89 to 91, 92. Okay. And then I was an assistant at Cleveland State. Okay. Uh, 92 to 93, 94. Was that after Cleveland State's I, success in men's basketball? Uh, right in between. Right in between, yeah. So assistant coach Duquesne, I coached Connie Hawkins men's okay. for three summers. Extremely successful. Mm -hmm. These guys are older yeah. than me. They're taller than me. And a lot of them are basketball legends. And they were legends. Right. And we had mm -hmm. two. I had Billy Varner who played at Valley, who mm -hmm. was a pro then. Okay. He was a European pro. So he was on my squad. Um, Andre Boyd, who was a point guard at yeah. Robert Morris University. Yeah, Robert Boyd. Yeah. I mean, these guys were... Talented. That was what year was that? That was ninety. That was uh, ninety ninety one when okay, I first so, started coaching. So I coaching played at Western. Mar I played Western Maryland in, in ninety two. Yeah. College basketball there, so I, yeah. I, I was with Boyd and all them, and I forget uh, Samba Johnson yeah, was yeah. a good friend, a childhood mm -hmm. friend of mine. Yes. I, where, I wonder where he is that now. Um, last I knew, I thought he was coaching in Ohio somewhere. Last time I remember. Not like a major school, just smaller. Smaller school. Smaller. Smaller. Okay. I think a Mac call, Mac school. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Assistant. Assistant. Okay. Yeah. Where did he play college ball? Uh, I don't remember where some. No, was. some played West Rob Morris, right? Did he? No, I'm not he, sure. He may have been local. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but I do know he had some kind of Robert Morris ties. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. but um, yeah. So I fell into. I mean, the, the coaching the men catapulted me mentally and physically. Mentally, yeah. I had these guys 
For three years, we went back to back. Uh, three point shot. Yeah, yeah. Connie Hawkins. A three point shot going down from a three P. And is that what you're, you're still coaching at Duquesne? No, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This was the summer. Oh, they. Because I could, I could coach college men because they weren't, they weren't one from one college. They, were, they were from all yeah. over, yeah. and they were men. I wasn't right. coaching women. Okay. I couldn't do women like and that. And that's how you know Bill Neal real well. Exactly. But you probably knew him from those then too. No, I met Bill Neal yeah, through maybe just Connie some Hawkins. community services. Okay. And I, the first year, he just so happened to ask me. I don't think he asked me because I was, like, I wasn't coach coach then. Right. So he just needed someone. I tell him he needed a filler. So he thought I would do it. So I was the first woman to coach in the league, to win coach of the year in the oh league, and to win back-to-back Coney Hawkins championships. I gained USA national attention oh, wow. for that. I was in the USA Today for winning that. Oh, wow. Um, oh, yeah. So the, the coaching, my coaching career catapulted right. from that first championship. Right. I mean, it became like wildfire around the city. Karen Owens for Coney right. Hawkins again. And it was like, wow. And I could coach men. So quickly... You coach now at CCAC. So I've been from from Cleveland, Cleveland State. I was all over the country. I started my head coaching job, my head coaching tours. I call it Northeastern Illinois University in okay. Chicago. So I had like three or four stints after that. Right. Uh, family changes brought right. me back to Pittsburgh. Right. Still wanted to coach, so I got a couple of different jobs here. Now I'm landing here at CCAC Allegheny. So in three wow. years at CCAC, um. A conference championship runner-up. Oh wow! Up. My gosh. Yeah, yeah, and then you know the rest of my team have been like 500 above right. below. So the, and we could we talked about the teaching thing before, yeah. but that would be part two, kind of yeah. say how did she come into teaching? Why did she go back to St. Agustin? Why did she meet someone that's like yeah. myself and then reaches out to me after yeah. she sees? Yeah. Uh, but you didn't know. You thought it was still the days of the total education hour. I you're did. Just, you did not know all what I've I'm just what so I'm just... doing and and who I've interviewed and all those interesting things. And like I said. She needs to get the blueprint out there. So again, Coach Karen Hall, amazing. And then WPL Hall of Fame, your right. team. Yes. So the Mount Alvernia women's team. Right, 34 no state championship team. Um, first, one, first high school girls team in the state of Pennsylvania. Do you think you'll ever be in the WPL Hall of Fame for women's basketball? Uh, I am. I'm already in the WPL Hall of Fame. But with for, the team. Our team is. What about our, the individual? I am. That's why I asked I, you. I, I'm a... So there's like seven or eight. So I'm like the fifth or sixth inductee. That's why I asked you. You said the team. I am. So I am a WPI. A Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. And that's what I think that I needs am. to be. That's going to be the first thing that's <laughs> going to be on the podcast. And, 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 and again, uh, my producer, Dave Cable, WPIL Hall of Famer. Yes. Because there's not a lot of them. Is Darrell Porter one? No, no. He, no. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a, a City Pittsburgh. League Hall yeah, of Famer. Yes, City League. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so you're bigger than him. We'll have to tell him no. that. All right, so thanks again for watching the Neil Haley Show. The season, the, the uh, fall season begins. Big guests coming up. And uh, you guys stay tuned. Go to my website, tolltutor.net, for more information. Twitter, tolltutor. Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, tolltutor, Pinterest, and Google Plus, and also on Periscope at Total Tutor. Tweet me out questions. Take care, guys, and we'll see you next week. TV. Come volunteer. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be here. BPTV. Come on in. Make a show. It's still fun after all these years.